Welcome, in this video we're going to take a look at what is the easiest and safest way to detect if SMB version 1 is being used before you disable it. My name is Dara Delaney from Netport. Now there's many reasons why you should get rid of SMB version 1. Uh, some of the recent ransomware attacks use the vulnerability found in this protocol, so you really do need to figure out if it's been used, and if so, take the appropriate action like apply patches or maybe disable it. So. You need a data source to, to figure out if you have SMB version 1. And one of the easiest and quickest ways to get a data source is by setting up a span or mirror port, typically off your core switch. So in my case here, as my clients access my file server, traffic flows through the core switch. And I configured a span port which sends a copy of that traffic out here to what's labeled here as a monitoring port, where I've got my LangGuardian system connected. So if you've got a managed switch, you're going to have the option of setting up a span or mirror port. So let's take a look at the if we've got SMB version 1. There's two things you need to look at. You need to look at, are there clients trying to connect using SMB version 1? And are there servers actually communicating with SMB version 1? So let's take a look at the two examples. So the, the first one, if you type in the search bar here, type in actions. So the report you're looking for here is top file share actions. Select that report and run it. So if you have clients out there trying to connect with SMB version one, you've got the events here and also any connections that are being established. Let's take a look at the first one, connection attempts. So here is a list of all devices on the network that are, try that are trying to connect using SMB version one. So it's absolutely critical that these machines are patched. What's worrying us on this network is we have a connection attempt from an external IP address here registered in Russia. That's a serious event. We really need to take action there and block that IP and prevent any inbound 445 activity on my firewall. Click on username here. You can also get associated usernames like Leo, Simon, Laura. They all have logged onto machines that are using SMB version 1. So that's an inventory of any systems out there trying to connect. And I have a pretty serious event here that I do need to take action on. Another approach if you're trying to clean up the SMB version 1 issue is to look for servers. Now I do have some servers listed here, but another useful way is to use the search bar to type in file servers. So you're looking for top file share servers. So type in, just type in file share in the search and select the report top file share servers. So what you want to do here is select SMB1, and then if you want to focus on a particular subnet, like 10.0.0 slash 8, for example, big subnet, run a report. Here we get an inventory then of all servers that are communicating. Now this is important that these ones are actually communicating using the SMB version 1 protocol. So again, I need to make sure they're patched, and by drilling down, I can actually get the clients, so this is the machine here that's making a connection using SMB version 1. In this case here, this file has been renamed to a potential ransomware attack. So if I go back here, so if I wanted to save this often as a custom report, just click on save as, give it a name, whatever SMB version 1 servers, and that's available then through your my report section. So there are two approaches. One is to re root out the clients that are trying to connect, and the other one is to root out the servers that are communicating using SMB version 1. So you can do both with the LangGuardian product.